So, um, um, here we are. So one of the things we're going to do with the class, we're going to uh, try to keep attendance. Attendance is not part of your grade. <laughs> but it may be something if you get in trouble. If you don't do well, there's this fact-checking and advisor, and we, I'd like to know who's in class. But if you do OK with the uh, homework and exams and all that, attendance is not part of your grade. So I have a list here. So everyone, see your name. You put a big dot <coughs> on the left side. OK? And you pass it upward. And then down and then up. Thank you. Uh, particularly, that's recommended because we film the lecture, so we don't want people to say, okay, I'm staying home and I'm watching the video later on. This way. Uh, that's our website for people who, who didn't uh, find it yet. And um, that's where the video is going to come. So every time it's a lecture and we film the lecture, then the video is going to show up in there, probably a YouTube link. Um, what else do we have? In here, uh, we have a homework due soon. How many days do we have for this homework? About nine days? Eight days? OK. Be aware that this homework is not the kind of homework can be done in like you know, half an hour. It's not hard, but it may take you two days, the written homework. The online homework, it's probably going to do on Saturday. That's something that you, you shouldn't let until the last moment, but probably one afternoon will be enough for it. Try for yourself. Uh, and there's been a change to these quizzes, the recitation quizzes, which are not happening this week. They happen at the end of the module. They're going to be on paper during the recitation. they still simple calculations. But I think we said before Blackboard, there's a change. Those are going to be on paper. Also, add recitations because you need a grade, because we, you need a different grade than the main grade for the course. What you do on the paper, the work for the recitation, you have to uh, give it to me. It will be collected at the end of recitations. Those, those sections that are broken into you know, four groups. You guys have four groups. Uh, you would get. Uh, the, the, the point of submitting those, whatever you wrote down uh, for the station materials is not to check that you've done it right as much as it is that you were there at recitation and then you try to work out those exercises. So you will get some sort of good or bad for them or something like that, but not so much related to whether you got the answers right, but more related to whether you put the right effort into it. So with that, we go back to binary. That's our first module, representations in binary. Um, that's a little joke here. But um, what we want to do next, I'm trying to close this up, is I want to show you up some uh, thing to do with bitwise operations. That's something that we talked about last time. What's that? Working? Good. Uh, and uh, this is the extra part, OK? So whenever I say extra, it's not for the credit. The regular sections don't do this. But I, I thought I'll show it to you, because it's quite useful as a programmer. So I have a piece of C++ code on the left side, which most of you haven't seen. And it's actually not recommended to start with as a programming language. It's a difficult programming language with a lot of mistakes. Uh, you're not going to see C++ probably until the second or third year in your curriculum. You start with um, uh, what, do you do, what do you do in, uh, in uh, uh, Fundis? DSL. Rocket, then you maybe do Java, and then you do other things. So we, we're not going to worry about how C++ works. In particular, it has these definitions. Every time you have a variable, you have to say int or char or char star or a pointer. So you have to declare all the variables and you 
it's kind of hard to change the type. But what I want to show you in this code is a little bit of uh, these bitwise operations. So what I have here is a terminal window. It's a Unix shell. And uh, this code has a make file. You have to compile it to make it work. Again, nothing to concern you right now. Uh, now, now it's going to execute just this part from main to return. Every time I say return, that's going to terminate the code, right? So what it's going to do, I ran it before here. So I, I, um, I run it this way. And here's an example of I have those two numbers. You see them right here. Uh, those are 150,000 each, right? They are declared on 32 bits. Every time I say integer, by default, is 32 bits. Remember discussion from last time? Every time we represent anything, we not just have to put the bits correctly, but we have to say how many bits are we using to this representation. So that's 32 bits. The problem in here that I want to show is that when I multiply two 32 bits numbers, the result, we know the result, right? 150,000 times 150,000. How much should that be? 15 times 15 is? 225. To 25. And how many zeros are supposed to be if each number has four zeros? Be eight zeros. So it's 225 followed by eight zeros. But I didn't get that. That number right there, uh, for some reason, this doesn't display the sign equal sign properly. That's not a minus. That's an equal sign. I don't know why. <laughs> See the number 1025163520? It's not the correct answer, which is 225 followed by eight zeros. Everybody's following me with that? 15 times 15 is 225. Then I have four zeros from the first one, four zeros from the second one. When I multiply those numbers, maybe you should write it down. supposed to get 15 squared times 10 to the 8, right? Because I need eight zeros. But I'm not getting that. Why I'm not getting that? Yes? How do you get like a maximum amount of memory can you get for that value? Which is, <coughs> what's the maximum amount of memory? Who decides how much memory can I get? A... I decided. Oh, when you, when you declare The it. moment I declare it an int, which is 32 bits. Problem is this number doesn't fit in 32 bits. You need more bits to represent it properly. This is called an overflow problem. I need a quantity that doesn't fit in my representation, <coughs> right? I can represent it with bits, but not with 32 bits. I need more bits to do that. So the computer, unfortunately, in C++, doesn't give me even a warning. It just, boom, produces a number. This number is not accidental. This has to do with if I'm to write this number down on more bits, not 32, but more bits, maybe I need so many bits. What it's going to do is going to chop these 32 bits, and it's going to give me the number that corresponds only to these 32 bits. Like I showed you before with the shift operations last time, everything that goes out of the memory gets ignored, gets lost. So this happened to be 10251635205520, whatever was written here when I do the multiplication, which is pretty random. But that's what I get. So careful with those representations. One of the problems is overflow, aka the result doesn't fit properly in the representation we have. Second thing I'm going to show you here uh, the way I make this program run, run further, I comment this, I save it, and then I rerun it. So now, what I'm showing here is the shifting operation. I'm taking the number 79. <coughs> I represent it in a binary, right? And then, um, in binary, I do the shift operations. You can see there that 15 number is the shifting to the right by 1. So that's A in my code. It's A14. That's a variable. And A15 right, says you got to take this variable, that is 79, and shift it to the right by 1. What should I expect as a result when I take 79 
We can figure out what 79 is in binary. What is it in binary? 64, that's a one. Then, 64. Then after 64, what do I have? Eight. Eight, so I have to have a zero for 16 and a one for eight. You mean 32. 32, sorry. So I have two zeros then, right? Yeah. Then I get a one, four, eight. 64 plus eight is 72. Yeah. How much do I need? Four, 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 two, two, four. And two and one. This is correct, no? Yeah. Yeah. So 64 plus eight, 72 plus seven, 79. And then of course I have a bunch of zero depending how big my representation is. Uh, in this case, it's 32 bits, so there will be bits completing up to 32. You can put any amount of zero in front of the number. It won't change its value. Just change how many bits are you using. So I take this number, right, and I'm shifting. This one is saying shift it one position to the right. So what happens when I shift to the right one position? Again, I want you to think of this mechanically. Literally take this and shift it to the right. What's going to happen with this last bit? Gone. 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 And then my number will be this part, right? Mm -hmm. When I shift to the right. So now this is going to give me as many zeros as I need in the front depends on my representation. But then it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 1, right? So this is gone. It, it's not gone because it's a 1. It's either one or zero, it will be gone. So what is this value now? This is now corresponding to 32 plus seven, right? That is 39. So in effect, what happened when I shifted to the right? Now conceptually, mechanically, I took the bits out of my window and I pushed them, the last bit got lost. Every bit now corresponds to a lower power of two. What happened conceptually? It's divided by two truncated. It's divided by two truncated, so also called integer division. If you take 79 and divide it by two in integer sense, what do you get? What's the quotient? 39. And what's the reminder? One. One. Reminder doesn't matter because it gets dropped. So I effectively divide it by two. And you can see that's the answer we get. What's the other operation demonstrated here? That is uh, this. I take the same number, 79, that is a 16 variable, <laughs> and I shift it to the left two positions. So when I shift this number, this is the same 79 number, to the left, that means that way, what happens mechanically? All bits correspond to different powers. This bit at 64, if I move it two positions, it's going to correspond to what power here? 256, right? This bit here that was an 8 is going to correspond to 32, so on and so forth. How about the last two when I shifted? What's happened to those positions that are new? Zero. Zero. So what will be the number here? I get a bunch of zeros depending on how many bits I want to represent on. Then this one comes in position 256. The, not, the, the, the bit sequence is the same. 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, right? But this one, instead of position 1, now is in position 4. And then I get two zeros. Those are the new positions because I shifted by 2. That's mechanical, but mathematically in effect. What happened? I multiplied by 4. So is 79 times 4 316? Yeah. Right? Is it or not? 79 times 4. 70 times 4 is. 79 times 4. 9 times 4 is 36. 28. 316. Right? Now, we said last time, there's a little caveat here, that when you shift to the left, some bits might come out. If they come out, that's another overflow problem. The operation works. You move to the left. 
but if this bit here would be in the top 32 position, that's the most significant bit on 32 bits, when I shift to the left, it gets out, and then the result is incorrect. In this case, it didn't happen because my bits were far away from the left end. Who's with me so far? Very good. Um, so I want to show you another thing here. Uh, I have two functions. This code you can download and run if you want to. Again, that's extra. has nothing to do with your grade. Uh, I have some two functions that are useful procedural functions, read the beats and write the beats, that will take read those beats into a string. So you can see them for any number. So that if you want to see what's the representation of a number, you can call this function read the beats. And uh, the function is somewhere in here. See, read the beats. And it gives you the bits corresponding to the representation of a number. So I can call this uh, and see what happens. Here's the representation of 79, 39, and uh, 316. The bits are backwards. The, the, the right side is on the, on the left. That's because I'm printing them backwards by mistake. So these numbers are the left side is to the right. You see the, that number here is written backwards. I'm just printing the, the bits in a different way. But even further, if I, go, if I go further with this, I could call those procedures not just for integers. Integers are easy to find out the bits, right? Because you can do these kind of procedures like we try to fit powers of two, so on and so forth, we get the bits representation. Something, again, that's very extra, like we don't even mention the regular section, <coughs> is what is the representation not of integers, but of floating numbers. So if I, if I try this, I think I was supposed to save this. You left I left the return somewhere. So return it killing my program here. I could do this for a double. I could say, here's a double value. There's a lot more bits in a double, right? Doubles are 64 bits. And I could check to see the bits in my double. That would be very useful for you when you try to understand how floating or double number work. That is the significant and the exponent. Uh, I can tell you quickly the story that if you have such a, a value, you represent it as an integer. You think of a value like that one. D is 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 9. So that's an integer times 10 at minus 1. So the way you think of doubles, again, that's just an interactive story. I don't want to make it formal. If we have time, we'll get to it in about two weeks uh, as an extra thing. Very useful for programmers if you want to float, work with float or, or double numbers. You take a number and you write it without dots. So you just write all the digits. And then this tells you where to put a dot. If it's 10 and minus 1, where the dot goes? Right here. But what if it's 10 and minus 3? It goes here, right? What if it's at plus 3? Yeah, you add three zeros, right? So that's how this, this representation works. There will be a bunch of bits for the integer part that is just this value, and there will be a bunch of bits for the exponent. The base is fixed. So I have to represent this exponent on some bits here. Yes? Uh, to be clear, does this apply to both doubles and floats or just floats? Floats and doubles. Okay. Mantisa and exponent. Uh, again, this is not a formal explanation, but as programmers and as people who work computers, you're going to hit this problem quite often. How do I, how the computers represent double a floating number? And then further, what is the precision? If I do it this way, what kind of numbers can I represent? How big, how small, and what precision do I have? Obviously, in conceptually, we have infinite precision, right? We put, you know, 25 decimals or so, we get very, very tiny rational numbers. Computers have a limit 
on how many things can they represent given how many bits we use for representation. And that, that representation is very different than integers. If you download this code and you play with these functions here, read the bits and write the bits, will give you a pretty good sense of how those representations work. Okay? Uh, that being said, I think we're ready to disconnect this and to continue with the binary explanations. <coughs> The first thing we want to do is to account for negative numbers. I think we already uh, talked about basic positive representation. So we have it right here. That's a positive representation, a positive integer. So we're back to integers. This was just a quick extra parenthesis that we, we don't have to deal with uh, uh, for credit. Uh, but for positive numbers, we have a representation. We have to assess how many bits we have. So um, we talked about powers of 2. Let's write them down really quick here. So 2 to the 0 is 1. Right? 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. 4 is 16. Let me see how far we can go. 2 to the 8. 2 to the 9. 2 to the 10. 2 to the 11. Maybe so, that's uh, what, 20, 24, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 124, this is 2048, and 212 is 496. And of course, this can keep going. I'm sure everybody knows powers of 2, so I won't insist on that. No. But I, I should say that 2 to the 10 has a name. Computers, 2 to the 10. And it's uh, approximately 1,000. It's not 1,000. It's 1,024. But sometimes when people approximate quantities, like a hard drive size, they say kilo, 10 to 2 to the 10, but it's really 10 to the third. And uh, other ones, 10 to the 20, it's called mega. That's roughly 1 million. It's not exactly 1 million, uh, because if the square of this is 10 to 1024 squared, which is more than a million, but we sometimes call a million mega. Yes? Sometimes don't you also see it as like that? What? So supposedly like metric prefixes, they also write it sometimes as uh, Kibi, K-I-B-I. Right, right. Uh, after kilo, mega, you have to say what those things are. So you see megabits, there are a million bits. If you see megabytes, there are a million bytes. If you see mega something, there's a million something. I'm just pointing out what mega, kilo, and uh, giga means. Giga would be 2 to the 30. That's roughly one billion. It's more than one billion, but as an approximation. And two to the 40, that is, anybody know this name? Terra. Terra. Uh, that's roughly 10 to the 12, right? It's 10 to the 9, 10 to 12. And I think the next one will be Penta, right? Hmm? Penta? Yeah, that's very good. That'll be 10 to the 15. Just so you know those names, I'm sure you, you've seen some of them. So now what's the story with uh, negative numbers? So how about negative integers? <coughs> to do negative integers, we need to deal with the sign. So our convention is going to be the first bit is the 
sign. And it's going to be 0 for positive and 1 for negative. So when you are in a signed environment, this here is called unsigned. Unsigned means what? There's no sign. So when we read the first bit, that has to do with the content. That means 0, it's 2 at some power bit that is missing just like any other bit. But in a signed environment, the first bit is the sign. And this is the universal convention. You can't choose. It's the way it is. Zero means positive, one means negative. So the question is, um, so how to do this? How to do this? Uh, we, we want to keep, keep the, um, representation we have for positives. That means, say, 5 in 4 bits. 5 is what in binary? 101, one, right? And I have another bit. That will be the sign bit. So this 0 is the sign bit now. And it's 0 because it's a positive. Question is, what should I do here? I have four bits. Here they are. This is the sign. So I'm trying to represent here minus five. Our convention says, if this is a sign, what should I do here? One. But what about this? What do I put in there? Here's one option. Why don't you put the 5? 101, one, right? So uh, as an option for the content bits, for the three content bits, just write 5. turns out that doesn't work very well. It doesn't facilitate operations. While it could be a convention as a representation, so you could do it on paper, this is not the, the way to represent numbers so computers work. So we won't do this. No. You can write a big no on your paper. If you have not seen binary representations before, this is the first thing that comes to mind, right? Put the bit and then write the number. That's not it. So again, if you are aware of how this works, you don't need this big exclamation mark in your notes. But if you're not aware, make sure you understand this is not a good representation. We're not going to use this. So we're not going to do this. Uh, there is one thing that here's another option. Let's just say this option here is bad. Right? Put it in red. Again, if you haven't seen this, make a mental note. This is not the way it goes. We have here an option that says it's called one complement. Is this good? Eh, no good. Eh, let's say decent. Maybe it could work. The, the way this one works, uh, one complement, is to say, uh, take the number, minus 5, this is how it goes. Take the number and first represent the positive side. So the step number 1, so let's say, you know, 1. Represent the positive value or, or, or the quantity. That would be what? Be 0, 1, 0, 1, right? That's 5. So I'm representing it without the sign. And 5 number 2, flip all bits. What does flip mean? 
make them the opposite value. Whatever was a zero, it's now one. Whatever one, now it's a zero. So if I flip all the bits, what do I get? One, zero, one, zero. That is minus five. So this is five. That is minus five. Again, what representation I'm using here? One complement. How many bits I'm allowing for my representation? Four. Four. One has to be the sign. Whenever you see one complement or signed, you have to be very clear on a problem with binary. I'm in an unsigned world or I'm in a signed world. In a signed world, I have to reserve the first bit for the sign. In an unsigned world, I don't have a sign. Everything is positive. So in here, this is a sign bit, and this is content. This works like the powers of two. Now, one zero one zero. If I'm unaware of what representation I have, one complement, I may read it in an unsigned world. And if I read it unsigned, this is a two, and this is a. So this whole thing would be ten. In an unsigned world, this is 10. In a signed one complement world, this is minus 5. So how does this work? Uh, if I have 5 plus 5, right, and then I subtract 5, this is the same as saying plus 5 and then plus minus 5, right? So I can add up those two. If I add up those things, what do I get? 1. One, one, one. But what I should get? Zero. This is zero, conceptually speaking, right? If plus five with minus five has to give me zero. So this is zero. But there's another zero, which is what? Zero, 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 zero. It's also zero. So there are two zeros here. If you want, this is a minus zero, and that's a plus zero, but minus and plus zero, they're the same quantity. Is it bad to have two zeros? Uh, well, some people have two symbols for the same thing, right? In fact, we use so many words to say the same exact thing. We can have two zeros, they mean the same, just different representations. So that's how this works. Um, now, some people prefer to think of representations with this kind of rules, and that's how the book does it, <laughs> and that's how most computer scientists learn it. Perhaps if you have seen this in high school, they give you some rule like that, represent it positive, flip the bits, right? How many people have seen this kind of mechanism, okay? Well, I came from a math department world, and in the math department, we, we, we don't learn it this way. This is a correct procedure, but in a, in a mathematics, you like to think more like conceptually how it works. So conceptually, this value is what? Mathematics speaking now. It's something minus five. In, 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 I can think about it as what minus five? If I, if I look at it in a, in a signed world, in an unsigned world, we said that's a 10, right? So what should value should be here? That's kind of 15 minus 5. Now, this 15, so this is read as unsigned. This value, 1010. Zero, one, zero. If I read it unsigned, I get 10, which is 15 minus 5. Now, this 5 of course comes from the fact that I'm representing 5, but where, what is this 15? What's, why is 15 and not 75? It's uh, 2 to the 4 minus 1. Okay, that's 2 to the 4 minus 1. 2 is the numeration base. 4 comes from where? Uh, number, of bit, uh, bits that number of bits that I'm using, right? And another way to put it is the maximum I can write with once, right? Is if I have 4 bits, the value that's here that subtracts to get me the, the, the representation is the one with full bits, which we said it's 
minus zero if we read it in a, in a sign world. But mechanically, what happened here uh, was I did one, 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 which was the full bit, minus five, which was one, zero, one, right? That's minus five. And then, of course, when I subtract the bits by bit, one minus one is zero, zero, one is one, zero, and one. That's what I get my representation. So this is another procedure that will give you the representation. You just have to be careful to not confuse conceptually what happens, which is the signs and all that, with procedurally what happens. You can use this procedure to say, ah, Virgil wants me to do minus five. I'm going to do five. I'm going to write five. And then subtract it from one, 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 one. I get the representation of minus five. That works as a mechanical procedure. But conceptually here, there's no 15. In this whole business, there is no 15. 15 cannot be represented in a signed world on four bits. What's the maximum value I have on four bits? Seven. Seven. And the range on the other side is? What's the most negative value I can get? Negative eight, maybe? Something for you to think about. In any case, this range does not contain 15 at all. So 15 helps me procedurally how to obtain representations. If you like this procedure, better than this. This is the same as that. Represent, flip the bits, or you can do this instead. You get a representation, but um, it's not what happened. I won't insist on this because it's not that good. Okay, we need the actual procedure of how computers represent numbers. So while this is okay mathematically, it's not efficient. So that's not what we're going to do. Most, while you have to know how this works, most of your exercises and certainly 100% of your practice with computers will not be on one complement. Will be on what? Two. Two. Two's complement. That's the one that we really need to, to understand how it works. So two's complement. <coughs> there are several ways to do this. Um, so I put all of them on the board. So let's let's take uh, five and minus five, right? So minus five. Step one will be represent the quantity. That will be positive quantity. So that's 0, 1, 0, 1. We say two complements, say four bits in here. Later on, we're going to do some examples on 8 bits or 16 bits. They work exactly the same way. So four bits, the first bit is the sign. That's the sign right here, positive. Two like before, flip the bits. So if I flip the bits mechanically, 1, 0, 1, 0. That's so far one complement. But there's a third step, which is add one. How many people seen this add one step before? Okay, not that many. So for the, for the ones of you who did not see it, uh, you may want to pause for a second and say, okay, how does this work? Why add one? And, and what's the meaning of it? So if I add one, what do I get? <coughs> 1, 0, 1, 1. That is minus 5. Again, this is a sign bit, and this is the content. So that's one way to think about it. And I think, again, that the typical education in computer science is to say, make sure you follow this procedure, <laughs> and you get the correct answer. Um, how about a different procedure that kind of follows this mechanism here? If I want to take the value, uh, so that's, that's kind of option two for how to do this. If I take the value five, which is zero, one, zero, one, and I want to get minus five, right? That's what I want to get. 
I'm subtracting it from zero, 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 thinking in my head, hey, if, if you do zero minus five, you're gonna get minus five, right? Right? Now, how do I do this? How do I subtract that from zero, 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 zero? I can do it. Well, the way I do it personally, this is just me, Virgil, because I, 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 I could never remember this thing, I'll be honest with you. If, if somebody showed me this stuff, you know, three hours later, I will, I will remember what order to do these things. Because conceptually, it makes no sense to me. Now, if you remember it, great, use that. But I could never figure out the order of those things. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I need to put something here that when I add it to minus five, I get zero, right? Whatever I write here on these four bits, it has to work that when I do the addition, I get back zero, right? Five plus minus five have to give me zeros. <coughs> In here, there's only one zero. And that is zero, 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 zero. So now when we do Whatever we write in minus five, when we add it to five, has to give zero, 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 zero. So what should I put here to get the zero? One. One, because if I put a zero, I don't get the zero back, right? Imagine I'm adding those two numbers to give me that. So instead of thinking of the subtraction, think of those two as being added. And this procedure in 30 years never failed me. I never got an answer wrong, while well, all my roommates and classmates got all kinds of answers wrong to complement. I never got it wrong because I always think of it as an addition. What should I put here? Now, one plus one is zero. I get the carry bit, right? So there's a carry bit. So what do I need here to get the zero? One. One. And one plus one, I get zero and another carry bit. So what do I need here to get the zero? Zero. Zero. So one plus one, the carry gives me zero, and another carry bit. So what do I need here to get the zero? One. One plus zero plus the carry is zero, and I get another carry bit, which would be this one here if I have another bit. But I don't have another bit, so this does not exist, because I only have four bits. Okay? Let's recap this procedure. I want to get minus five. <coughs> What I do? I said, write down five, and then figure out what minus five needs to be so that when I add this plus five, I get zero, 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 zero. I don't really get zero, 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 zero. I get one, zero, 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 zero. But this one, it's overflow on four bits, so it doesn't count. Is this the same value like in here? I'm getting the correct value? Here's an exercise for you. Prove mathematically that those two things, those two procedures, achieve always the same result. Okay? So how would it work for one? What is one? I want minus one, right? I think of one being what? Let's do eight bits here. In eight bits, who is one? Zero, 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 one. one. That is one on eight bits. This is a sign. We are in a sign world now, so zero means positive. Well, we want to get minus one, so we put here zero, 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 zero. So what do I have to put here that when I sum those two up, I get the zero? One. 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 This is minus one on eight bits. Who's following me? Very good. It, it, it does be a good time to ask a question. Yes? So I understand how this two complement works, but I'm still not sure why the first reason is bad. Is it bad way? This? Yes. This is not efficient for computers to implement. It's not bad mathematically. It's a, it's a consistent representation. You can work with it if you'd like. But for computers to add up things and get 111 as second zero? Oh, no, no, no. The, uh, the first one they said crossed out. This one? Yeah. Uh, it, it, okay, so we, we need to make a parenthesis that's too long for the class, but this representation, um, it, will, it will not translate into proper addition and subtraction operations. Okay. 
right? It, it, you can still work with it as in take the first sign, read it humanly as a sign, plus or minus, then take this value and make something out of it, and then you get the correct value. That's what you mean. In that sense, it works. It's not confusing or ambiguous. Uh, a bunch of bits will always mean the same thing. But how do I add those two numbers now? You know, computers work by adding very fast bit by bit operations. Yeah. And that, that won't play out well. The other one might play out, except for the fact that I have two zeros, I have to deal with that. So it's not used, because this is far more effective. OK? So we got this 1 and minus 1 here. Again, the way I think about this, and I've always did, is when somebody asks me for minus 1, I'll figure out, well, what do I need so that when I add 1, because I always know the positive value, I get 0, 0, 0, 0. In fact, we don't get 0, 0, 0. We technically get a 1 here. <coughs> think about it. If I add everything, I get a carry 1. That's overflow, so it gets out. The other way to think about this is like we did here with the powers of 2. Who is minus 1 conceptually? Uh, is we, we write it as 2 at this power, which is 8, minus 1. 2 at 8 is the same as 0, right? In 8 bits, 2 at 8, it's 1 followed by 8 zeros. But since I only have 8 bits, the 1 doesn't count. So 2 at 8 is not representable in, in 8 bits. But conceptually, if I think of 2 at 8 minus 1, I get this value here. What happens if I read this in um, in unsigned world? What is this? If I don't read a sign, if I read it as unsigned. It's going to be 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 6, right? Plus 2 to the 5, plus, 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 plus 2 to the 0. Right, these are all the bits. Each bit corresponds to a power. And that is called a geometric progression. And it's equal with 2 to the 8 minus 1. Do you guys know this formula? x at 0 plus x at 1 plus any x plus x at 2 plus x at some power k, <coughs> if I sum them up, I get what? Maybe I multiply this with uh, x minus 1. And I get x at the next power, k plus 1, minus 1. Anybody remember this formula from high school? Hands up. OK, this is a formula that you have to know sooner or later. It's called geometric progression. This is a mathematical fact. It has nothing to do with the base 2, necessarily. You put any number, and this is geometric progression, x at 0, which is always 1, plus x plus x squared plus 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 x to some power, for example, 17. You multiply this with x minus 1, you get x at the next power minus 1. So in the case of 2, I could say 2 at 0 plus 2 at 1. So if I make x equal 2, what do I get? 2 at 0 plus 2 at 1 plus plus say 2 to the 10 multiplied by x minus 1 is 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 means 1, so it doesn't count here at multiplication. This would be what? 2 to the next power, 11 minus 1. <coughs> Actually, all bases of numeration, including base 2, relies on this fact. This fact in base 2 is equivalent to saying if you take 1, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10 to the 11. So that would be how many zeros I need here? 11 zeros, right? This one. And if you subtract 1, subtract 1, it tells you what? That if you take 2 to the 11, right here, I hope I have 11 zeros, 3, 3, 4, and I subtract 1, it tells you I'm getting this, which is what in base 2? 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All these powers means there's a bit for every single power, right? So I'm going to get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 11 ones. 
that's how the numeration basis work. When you reach the maximum representation on 11 bits, if you add one more one, you have to use now 12 bits. So how would this work in base 10? In base 10, let's say base 10, four bits. Four digits, I shouldn't say bits, because now I'm in base 10. If I have nine, 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 which is the maximum number I can write on four digits, correct? And if I choose to add one to it, I have to use another digit now to represent that number correctly, right? And the value would be in base 10? One, zero, 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 right? 10,000. This corresponds, like in base two, to a geometric progression. What is the geometric progression equivalent in base 10? That's equivalent to this addition. It's to say that 10 to the three, right? plus 10 to the 2, plus 10 to the 1, plus 10 to the 0. That's the x part, this geometric progression. Multiply who's x minus 1? 10 minus 1. That makes all the digits being 9. Will have to be according to the formula what? 10 to the next power minus 1. So this, is, this number here is 9999 nine, 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 because it's 1111 one, one, one times 9. That says if I add 1 to it, if I move this minus 1 on this side, I get 10 to the next power, which is 10,000. This principle works on all bases. That's how they do. When you reach the maximum representation, add 1 to it, geometric progression causes you to use 1 and a bunch of zeros. <coughs> Um, so two complement question yes. So how do you convert back from the original? Uh, you mean if if I have this representation, yeah. how do I read it? Well, <coughs> I can I can reverse these operations, right? For example, let's take this minus five here. How would I revert this operation? I have to do it in the order three to one, right? Instead of adding one, I have to take one out. So I'll be if I take one out, it would be one zero, one zero, right? Now the one will, right, so how do I do subtraction, okay? And then I have to flip the bits, and then I have to remember that what I've got now needs a sign in front of it, right? Right. Um, so that's a good question. How should I do this? If somebody gives me this string, how do I get the value out of it? Yes? How does the computer know what it has to do those steps to get the value of negative value? Right. So how do we do it procedurally, or how do we do it conceptually? Yes? I like that's something that's an add-on method, so it works both ways. So if you want to get to positive or positive to negative, always just see that it's an add-on. Right, so this, this flipping of bits, it's a, uh, if I flip the bits on top of flipping the bits, right, it's, it's a symmetric operation, right? From an apple, I get an orange, but if I flip the bits again from the orange, I get back the apple. That, that I think, is the point he's making. So how can I do this? If you guys get this string, how do you know the value? Yes? You take the most significant and make it negative. So like negative, it's going to be like negative power three. So you know this is a negative number. Yeah. It's a sign world. One clearly says negative. Remember, in a sign world, one is negative, <laughs> zero is positive. But then this, but that's not the five, right? If I yeah, you do negative two to the power three plus two to the power of one plus two to the power of zero. So what do I do? Negative two to the power of three plus you can the zero, so plus two to the power of one plus two to the power of zero. Okay. So is this gonna give me what? Okay. So where did he get the two to the one and two to the zeros first? Where where how did he figure out the powers here? Two to the one and two to the zero are who? Are those bits. You guys following me? I take those bits that are ones and those are powers, just like in a positive representation. Zero is zero, so it doesn't appear here. One is the sign, so I'm not worried about. And then how do I get this two to the three? 
why two to the three and not some other thing? Yes? Is that the maximum that the three other bits could be? Right. Or like so on maximum. four bits, this is the most you know, negative number, two to the three, right? Minus two to the three. So that's effectively saying this is minus one, zero, 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 right? <laughs> minus eight plus two is one, zero, right? Plus uh, this is plus zero, 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 one. You can think about it this way, right? Minus comes from the fact that I have a negative number here. That's why I get the minus. And the reason I have three zeros is because this one four bits. And those two values come from these bits that are in my number representation. Uh, there is no amount of explaining that will do this for you. There's few explanations that are all correct. What you have to do is to make sure you practice a lot. So at recitation and at the homeworks, that's our job, to practice from positive to negative, from negative back to base 10, so on and so forth. And uh, the, the way, easier way to do this, I think, again, is to take account how zero represents. Right? If, if um, I can do, I can play with those numbers the same way I played before and say, if somebody gives me this string and I want to know the value, another procedure is, I know I have to get a zero. What should I put here to get a zero? So I can think about it, minus five, I don't know the number, right? But I know it's one, zero, one, one. And then I figure out, okay, I need to add it with something to get zero, 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 zero. This is the reverse procedure of what I told you earlier. That always worked for me. I could not remember those rules, but I already thought like that. I don't know what this number is, but what should I add to get zero, 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 zero? And I, I mechanically do this operation. One plus, what do I need here? One. 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 Then I get a carry bit. One plus, what do I need to get a zero? Zero. 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 Do I get a carry bit now? Yeah. Yes. So what do I need here to get a zero? One. One. And here? I have a carry, so I need a zero, right? Zero. And there'll be another one here, but this one doesn't matter. So now I figure out what I need to add. This is a negative value, so this has to be a positive value. If I read this, I know how to read it. This is simply taking a binary number, convert it to base 10, which is 5. If this is 5, then what value was here? Negative. I'm not kidding. I've been a math major, quite successful at it, and I could never figure out those rules. So every time somebody gave me anything like that, I had to write down the zero, 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 figure out what to add to it to get the right answer. And I never got it wrong. Took me a longer than maybe people that could flip the bits fast, but that's what I've done. That, that other way wouldn't work if the most significant bit was zero, right? Which other way? No, but if, if like the... Yeah, um, the way where you, like, negative, no, that one. Yeah. This. Yeah. So if it was, like, one, so you just don't, okay, so it's the most significant. Yeah. So you put a negative to the most significant. Right. If, if, if this would be, this would work because if I have here a zero, I wouldn't have this, and I would just read it two plus one is three, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, is it possible to add two negative numbers to equal zero? Well, let's see. Right, how about uh, minus 5, right? We said, I don't know. Let's try. Minus 5 is what? Shadow. Shadow. <laughs> minus 5. We said it's 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, right? Yeah. How about minus uh, 6? What is that? Well, I don't know. So I do my thing, right? Uh, I know 6 is what? Zero one one zero minus six. I don't know, but I need, I know it has to come up with zero 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 when I add them. So that's how I figure out what minus six is. What is this? Zero. Which, if I read it uh, unsigned, would be what? Eight, right? Plus two would be ten. Okay, so I think this is minus six, so if I put it here, one, zero, one, zero, right? What do I get? Oh, yeah, 
I'm adding them, but they're both negative. I do regular addition, one, zero, <coughs> carry bit, right? One, and one plus one is zero. I will need this other bit here if I do the, the addition, right? And this bit doesn't exist. So what do I get? Is that correct? No, no. overflow. Right. Uh, the problem is minus five and minus six do not correctly uh, the sum of them is what? Minus 11? It's yeah. not, we cannot represent minus 11 <laughs> on 3 bits because the range of 3 bits is from minus uh, 2 to the 3 to what? To 2 to the 3 minus 1 or from minus 8 to 7. So the numbers representable on three bits plus sign. So there's three bits plus sign. The, the, the minus eight here will be one, 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 one. Minus seven will be one, uh, so I need to, so it's one zero, uh, one zero, one zero, I don't know. I have it on paper. Okay. So, minus 128, that's not it. Sorry, mistake. One zero, zero, one. Minus six is one zero, one zero. Minus five. Uh, zero, uh, one, one. Minus one, we already said that's one, 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 one. Zero, of course, is zero, 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 and then it follows what you'd expect. The last one here being the maximum I can imprint is seven <coughs> as, again, maximum seven, zero, so this is a good table to have in mind. Uh, even if it's for three bits, the same table works on, uh, so this is four bits with sign, eight bits, 16 bits. You have to know what's the minimum value, what is minus one. These are critical. The minimum value, the minus one representation. Zero, everybody knows it's zero, and then the maximum value. So I couldn't represent here minus 11 because it's out of range. But what if I try a different one that's in the range? So say minus uh, 3 and minus 2, those should work because they, the result should be minus 5, right? In the range. <laughs> Would this work? So minus 3, who's minus 3? Who is minus 3? How about we try this procedure with the flipping stuff? Three is what? <coughs> Three is zero, one, one. Zero, zero, one, one. Right? It's four bits in here. If I flip the bits, one, one, zero, zero, and then plus one? One, one, zero, one. So one, one, zero, one. I can do my check if I am to add uh, three to this thing, which is one, one. Do I get zero, 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 zero? Yeah. I do? If I add up those things, do I get zero, 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 zero? Yeah. I do. Good. How about minus two? Minus two would be, if I take two, that's zero, zero, one, zero, flip. So two. Zero, zero, one, zero, flip. One. Zero. One, one, zero, one, and plus one, 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 zero. Let's add them. What do we get? One, 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 and another one that goes out, right? 
Is this correctly minus 5? Yeah. It worked, right? Because minus 5 is in range. <coughs> Always pay attention to the range. Okay? Minus 11, not in range. So I couldn't represent it. But minus 5 is in range. It should work fine. Um, okay. So um, let's uh, do more of these exercises, right? What do we have here? Uh, we have a bunch of examples. And we're going to do more of it at recitation, of course. All our recitation next week is this kind of stuff. This week, sorry. So was that flood number at the very beginning when it was overflowing? Was that, would that be a geometric sequence for like 2 to the 32? Uh, one. Floats don't work like that because oh, okay. the representation is broken into the oh, integer right, right, part right. and the exponential part. So when you overflow, what do you overflow? The exponent or the representation? And you can organize that in different ways it, with too much of a parenthesis to open it now. But if we finish binary, I'll get, not today, next time, a little bit into the float. <laughs> You'll not have any problem of floating numbers whatsoever in uh, exams or Homewards. But there is, of course, everything can overflow. If you do gigantic operations, any numbers will get out of range. Um, so we tried here, what, minus 3 plus, where was that? Minus 3, minus 2. How about plus 3, minus 2, if I have to add them up? 3 is what? On 4 bits. 0011. 0011. Two, we said it's what? Anybody remembers? 111. 1110, is that right? Yes. What's that one? How do I check if this we, is the correct yeah, one? We can do that if I add 2 to it, 2 is what? 0010. One zero, right? So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. As long as I get 0 by adding 2, it means I have the correct <laughs> representation for minus 2. I cannot emphasize this enough how helpful it is. Whatever mechanism you use to do these representations, anything you like from this board, and maybe some other mechanisms that I don't even know. When you write it down, make a mental check. If I add two to it, do I get zero or not? It doesn't take more than a few seconds to figure out if I try to add two to this number, do I get zero, 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 zero? You should also get the extra one, but the extra one doesn't matter for me. If you do, then you got the correct representation. Okay, if I add them, what do I get? One. Zero. Zero and a carry. Zero. Zero and a carry. Zero. And a carry. That, that, that won't matter, the last bit, whether it's a carry, it's out of range. Is this the correct answer? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So that thing worked. Um, how about uh, some examples I have here on eight bits? So minus um, 39, uh, I'm going to say directly what it is. One, so this is 8 bits signed to complement. You have to specify those things for your representation, whether it's one complement or two complement. Usually, if you don't say anything, we'll assume to complement because that's the one everybody's using. Sign or not sign, that's critical. Numbers will be very different if you don't sign. And the number of bits you're using. So here we have eight bits. One, uh, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. I say that is minus 39. Am I right? Is this minus 39? We can check. How do we check? Oh, try to add 39 to it. I mean, maybe you can try the other procedures. For me, the easier thing, add just 39 to it. So what is 39? One, One that's the 39 is 32 plus 7, right? 7 is 1, 1, 1. That's the 7. Mm -hmm. And then that's in the position of 4. So I get 0. 4, 8, 0 for 16, and 1 for 32. Is that true? So 32, no 16, no 8, 
Okay, 4, 2, and 1. 4 to 1 plus LP2 gives me 39. Hands up who's following me that this is 39. Good. So now let's try to add them. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. Bingo. Jackpot. It works. So that is 39. And uh, I have here another one, 92. 92, how do I decompose 92 into powers of 2? So what's the biggest power that gets in? 64. 64, what position is 64? The first bit is the sign. <coughs> and th this one corresponds to what? So this is 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, and 2 to the 7. But that's not 2 to the 7 is the sign. So if I think about it this way, where is 64? It's here, right? <coughs> so 64. Then what's the next power that fits in? Can I fit the 32 in? No. no. Uh, how about the 16? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 64 plus 16 is? 80. 80. What else can I fit? An 8. So that is uh, now 88. What else can I fit? Four. Four. One, zero, zero. Is that right? And then the sign is? Zero because this is plus. Plus is zero, minus is one. So what if I add them up? Minus 39, which we said it's one, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. Right? And then plus 92. We said uh, this is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Is the camera recording? Can you guys take a quick look there? It says rec on it. All the red dots are right. so. so, what if I add those two numbers? 1, 0, 1, 1. Zero and a carry, right? And so I get what here? One, one and a carry. One, no carry. One plus one? Zero. Zero and a carry. Zero and then carry it over. There we go. So what is this? This is a positive number, right? Because it has a zero in the front. Positive number with the zero in the front. Let's see what value is this in, in decimal. Well, let's put it here. So this is one plus four. It's five plus, this is what? 16. 16 21 plus 32. How much is that? 53. Is that the correct answer? The correct answer. Let's try another one, really quick. Um, again, more of this to come at recitations. Um, how about we try this one, minus 19, uh, and then minus 7. This is what I want to get here, minus 19 and minus 7. So here's minus 19, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. I would like to try to verify that this is minus 19, and I could do what I like to do, add 19 to it, see if it works. Or we can try to reverse engineer that three-step procedure. Remember the procedure? Write the positive value, step one. Step two was what? Flip, Flip the bits. And step three was? Okay. Add one. How about we reverse it? If we don't add one, aka take one out, I would get what? One, 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 zero, one, one, zero, zero. 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 If we flip the bits now, that's reversing the second step. I'm, I'm counting on you guys to see it all in here without me writing it on the board. <laughs> Imagine I have a zero here, now I flip all the bits, what do I get? 
I get one one in here, zero, zero, one, and then the rest zeros. So this one stays in what position? Corresponds to what number? Two to the four. I have one, 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 so 16 plus two plus one? 19. 19. Checks out. <laughs> How about minus seven? Minus seven is one, 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 uh, one, one, zero, zero, one. Let's do the other trick on this one. If I add seven, what is seven? If I add seven, seven would be one, 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 right? That's seven. It's one plus two plus four. Zero, zero, a bunch of zeros here. If I add those two numbers, one plus one? Zero. Keep a carry, one plus zero plus the carry, zero, 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 checks out. So that has to be minus seven, because I added seven to it, I got zero. How about the result? Normal addition here, one plus one, zero and the carry. So this is now one, no carry. Zero plus one, one, no carry. 1 plus 1, 0, and the carry. 1 plus 0 plus 1, 0, carry. zero and the carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1, one. 1 and the carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 and the carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1 and the carry, which it gets out. The last carry would normally come here, but in here we don't have this position. It's only 8 bits, right? So now, what is this value? How do I think about that? What should I add to it to get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? If this is a negative number, because it's 1 in the front. So I do my procedure <coughs> saying, you want to get a 0? Well, figure out what you need to add there to get a 0. What should I put here? What 0 plus what gives me a 0? Zero? 0. How about here? One. One plus one is zero plus the carry, so I have one plus one plus what? Zero. 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 That's one and the carry. One plus zero is one. What do I need here to get the zero? One. One and the carry. I need a one and the carry here. I need a zero. Zero. And I have a carry? Zero. Hmm. That can be possibly true. We made a mistake somewhere. Oh, no, no, no. That's correct. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what did I do? 1 plus 1, 0, and the carry. So here I needed a 1, right? Yes. I need another 1 here? Yes. 0, 0, 0. That's correct. It's a positive number, right? So now this is what? 16. This is 8. And this is a 2. How much is 16 plus 8 plus 2? 26. So if that's 26, this value must have been what? Is that correct? Yes. Can you find negative 7 through the 2 complement process? Negative 7 through yeah. the steps 1, 2, 3? Yeah. OK. So 7 is what? Uh, one on, on how many bits are we talking about? Oh, I'll do it on 8. So okay. So on 8 bits. So 5 zeros. So 0, 0, 0, 0. That's 4, 5, 1, 1, 1. Yeah. Then what's the next step? Add 1. Flip the bits. Oh, that's why I was here. Okay. Flip the bits. Remember when I tell you why don't I never, <laughs> as a student, like this procedure with three steps? I could never remember the order. I would always get it wrong. Yeah. Because I do class one before I flip the bits, right? That's yeah, what you that's just did, right? So I said, forget it. I'm never going to get that right. I was an A++ student, by the way, in mathematics. <laughs> because I always checked it. I say, wait a minute. Forget about the procedure. If you like the procedure, you can use it. As long as you get the right result, it's fine with me. Uh, but don't, don't come back crying saying, oh, I, I remember it. I j just reversed the rules a little bit. I applied the third rule first. Sorry, wrong answer. So what do I need? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. How do I figure out what to put here? Well, I need here a 1, right? Carry, 0, carry, 0. 
carry. One, 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 one. That's got to be uh, minus seven on eight bits. OK? Uh, one more. You know, I have to do something with the, reg well, the regular section does so that you guys don't get stuck on exercises talk about base eight. So I have to have two minutes at the end for that. I'm sure you could figure it out. Um, I think this is more interesting here. So let's do this one. We are on eight bits, signed to complement. Uh, and we want to add 104, two positive numbers this time. Easy, we don't have to do those checks. And 45. What is 104? What's the biggest power that fits in? 64. 64, so 64, it's a one. The next power is? 32. 32. 30, 64 plus 32 is 96. How much I have left? Eight. Exactly. So what's the next bit? Zero. Next bit will be for 16, right? This is 32, this is 16, so that's a zero. But for eight, I have a one, right? And then nothing else, right? This is for 8, this is for 4, 2, and 1. And the sign bit, of course, has to be 0. zero. That's a positive value. Automatically, there is no 128 here. That power doesn't exist. That's a sign bit. How about 45? 45, the biggest power that fits in is? 32. 32, that's a 1. What else fits in after I take 32 out? 8. 8. 32 plus 8 gives me a 40. 40. So what else fits? Four and one. A 4 and a 1. So I get a bunch of zeros like that. Oh wait. Again, how you do this, it's up to you. I do it in this way. You can do it with the integer divisions or shifting operations, whatever works. As long as you get the right answer, there will be no question of what procedure did you use to do that. Suppose I want to add them up. So what do I get? Uh, th these are the powers, they don't get added up. 1 plus 0, 1, 0, 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus 1, 0 and the carry. 1 plus 0 plus 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 0 and the carry. 1 plus 1 plus 0, 0 and the carry. 1 plus 0 plus 0, 1. Is there a carry? So what is this? It's out of range. Yeah, it's That's out of the range. It's out of range. The value might be correct if I read it unsigned, which I'm not supposed to do because I'm in a signed world. But suppose I do read it unsigned. What is this value unsigned? 128. 128 plus, this is the 16th. Plus four plus one. How, how much I get here? One hundred forty-nine. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It happens to be correct. Okay, but only because I'm an unsigned world, so that that's that's not correct because I declared those variables assigned. So this would be a weird value, right? If I read it in a sign. Uh, in a signed way, this will certainly be negative, right? Because this one here will indicate a minus sign. The reason I get a, a weird answer, definitely incorrect, because some of those two values, 149, is not whatever this one is saying, is that I've got out of range. This is a typical case of overflow. I needed this bit to represent quantity, but the sign forced me to represent the sign. Now, what value did I actually get? If I am to read this in a signed version, which I know is the wrong value, but what value is it? What is this number? 
What did I get here? I get a negative value because of this one. But what? Negative what? One of seven. Hmm? Negative one of seven? How did you get that? You're not supposed to take the one out and then flip the bits? Subtract Which way is it? Subtract the bits and, and then So you have to take this one out, zeros, and then flip the bits. Isn't that the same as flipping the bits and then adding one? No, she just tried that and I think it didn't work for minus seven. When she added one and then Right. If you, if you do the exact same process, it'll still work. If you yeah, forty one. I don't think I, I think it may not work for the out of uh, for the end of range values like minus seven. So if I do the zero here and I get one one that's sixty ninety six uh, plus the eight plus the two plus one that is eleven and the six one oh seven very good. Okay, so obviously there's a negative value. But what is, why, what's the relationship between this negative weird incorrect value, I should say again, incorrect. That's not the answer. But as incorrect as it is, what is the relationship between this incorrect value and the correct value? I get an incorrect value here. But there's a relationship between this value and that value. Yes? So you have the maximum value, which is 127. And then the minimum value, which is negative 128, so it wraps around. So as you count up to 127, then you start going, then you, then you overflow, but you go over to negative 128, and you start counting negative 128, negative 127, negative 126, until you go down to negative 127. So Who followed that? <laughs> okay. So he's correct, but there's a much simpler version of it. <laughs> yes. The difference between them is to the power of Right, the, the difference between them, a, aka 149, which is the correct value, minus, minus 107, <coughs> aka plus 107, is 2 to the 8, which is not a coincidence. 2 is the base, and 8, why is 8 here? <coughs> eight bits. I'm using 8 bits. So sometimes you want to manipulate those things in cool ways, and you could do that. Be extremely careful of working with the incorrect values. Can you just explain how you got to negative 107? Why is, why is minus 107? <coughs> or no, how did you get there from that? From here? Yeah, did you add or subtract? Like well, he figured it out. And I just verified his answer. All right, I said, uh, if, I, if, I, if I flip this bit, which is the third step in the procedure, I get a 0. Uh -huh. So I, I subtract this 1, I get a 0. And then I look at the number flip to be 1, 1, one, one, one. Okay. Right? So the first step would be to put here a zero and then to flip everything. One, one, zero, one, zero, one, one. Okay, so I added up 64 plus 32 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1. Okay. 8 plus 2 plus 1 is 11. Plus 32 is 43. Okay. Plus 64. Okay. 107. Okay, so when you're doing it reverse, Flip the bit, uh, uh, subtract one, and, and then, then flip, flip the bit. bit. So it's reverse of what it was right. initially. Okay. Just I, I, I wouldn't do it that way. Again, I yeah, would just yeah. add 107 to it to see if I get 0, 0, 0, 0. That seems like a safe way to me. But you're welcome to do whatever fits comfortable. Fits comfortable. OK, so I have more examples here. We can certainly pose those online, and we, we deal with some of them at recitation. Um, so another thing that I have to, we have to do today is um, to, we kind of separate these issues now. We're back to the unsigned. Let's, uh, let's take some uh, value here, like 107, which we just wrote on 8 bits. We said 107 on 8 bits is 64 uh, plus 32. And then um, uh, I think this one is missing. And then we have one, uh, one, 
one zero one one. So that's uh, two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, uh, two to the seven, three zero. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Ninety six plus eleven. Unsigned means what's up with this bit in an unsigned world? This bit is says what? Zero or one? <coughs> what is this bit meaning? Plus one hundred twenty eight talks to about 128. This is not a sign bit because there's no sign here. If I have this bit, I add 128 to it. In an unsigned world on 8 bits, what is the range? <coughs> the range is not anymore what it was before. In a signed world, we say it's from minus 128 to plus 127. In an unsigned world, the range is from 0 to What's the biggest number I can write on 8 bits unsigned? 2 to the 5th, 255, which of course is who? 2 to the 8, minus 1. That has to do with that geometric progression. If, if I write 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, that's got to be 255 because I have 1 to it, I get 256 and just to the 8. That's 107. Well, suppose I want to uh, write it in. Um, in base 4. So in the unsigned world, but base 4. Um, so the digits are 0, 1, 2, and 3 here. So how can I transform this, this number from 8 bits in base 2 to some bits in base 4? Take two bits at a time. Make one digit. So if I take those two, what digit is this? In base four. Three. Three. If I take those two, what digit is this? Two. Two. If I take those two, what digit is this? Two. Yes. If I take those two, what digit is that? One. 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 Is this correct? Let's check. If this in base four, <laughs> we transform it in base ten. This is 1 times 4 at what power? <laughs> Third. Plus 2 times 4 at what power? So this is 64. This is 4 squared is 16, right? So 2 times 16 is 32. This is 8, and this is 3. Did I get 107? Yeah. In base 10? It's no surprise, because look at what happened with the representation. 1 times 4 to the third, 64, is this 64 from here? How about this 2 times 4 to the 2? Who is that? This is the 32 that was here. This 8, 2 fourths, 8, is the 8 here in base 2. And 3 stands for a 2 and a 1 together. So in base 4, because 4 is 2 squared, things would work that way. That's not applying to base 3 or base 5, because 3 or 5 are not powers of 2. Of course, there's still valid representation base 3 and base 5. It's just not mechanically working that way. How about in base 16? Who's 16? 2 to what power? 4. Four. 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 So can I do the same trick in base 16? Yeah. Yeah. Take how many bits? 4. 4, Four bits. <coughs> and this becomes a what? What is 1011 in base 16? What is 1011 in decimal? What's the quantity? Four. 8 plus 3. So that's 11. That's one digit. And how about this other digit? 110 one, is what? What? 6. So I got 611. Oh, that's nice with the lights. 
I, I did I did ask about this and uh, they told me some complication requests I don't know it's slow to <laughs> happen so 611 in base 16 okay let's verify this 6 gets multiplied with the base 16 at what power one. how many digits one. are after 6 square one. one digit 11 is one digit here the digits in base 16 are hex digits that's how we call them are from 0 to what's the last digit what 15 right so 6 times 16 plus 11 times 16 at 0 how much is 6 times 16 96 plus 11 107 correct no surprise again this 96 here it's the 64 plus 32 and this 11 is the 8 plus 2 plus 1. Now, in base 16, we use different names for digits that are 10 or higher. They still 10, 11, 12. We're talking about these digits, right? This is 0 up to 9, but then there's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Again, valid digits in base 16, but for writing them, if I write 1, 4, I wouldn't know is the digit 14 or is the digit 1 and then the digit 4. I could write with parentheses, like I put here the circle, make sure it's the 11. Instead of that, we have a standard notation for the digits that have two symbols in them, like 10. How do we call them? 10, we call it? A. 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 B. C. D. E. F. So my number here would be 6. What's 11? B. 6B. How many people have seen hex digits before? Great. It's not a big deal. Don't get scared by B, C, D, <coughs> so on and so forth. B stands for 11, C stands for 12, so on and so forth, okay? You can even write it that way informally if that makes sense for you, 11 with a parenthesis or a circle. But when you write formally, you have to put the proper digit, which is B. So that's in hex. And, uh, the same thing works in octal. So in octal, if I want to write this number in octal, so base 8. Digits are from 0 to 7. And 8 is, of course, 2 to the third. So how do I take this number, make it in octal? I take three at a time. So here's three bits. That comes down to how much, what's value? Three. Three. Then to take the next three bits, this is the next one, is a what? 101 is a five. Three, five. And this, I only have two bits, so what would I put implicitly here for the third bit? Zero. zero. So zero, zero, one is a? One. One. This is in base eight. If I'm to check it in base ten, to always check the value. One times eight at what power? How many bits are after? Two, two plus five times eight plus three. That is sixty-four. Plus forty plus three. One seven in base ten. So those bases are nice four, eight, sixteen because. They give me a quick way to transform it from binary by taking two bits for a digit, or four bits for a digit, or three bits for a digit. But remember, representation works fine in all bases. Just with the bases that are not powers of two, I can't do this three. Uh, the last thing I want to do, it's going to take me two, three, four minutes, something like that, is uh, to play a little game. Okay. We didn't have time today to get into the square game, but definitely we want to get back to that square game at recitation. So here's the game I want to play. I want to think of, um, say, a number that we had here, 107, that's good. Let's write it down again. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is uh, 107, and it's in 8 bits. 
how can I identify this number? So plays, I, I, I play a game similar to the cards game at the first recitation. And the game is you have to identify the number. That's my number in my head. And you get to ask some questions to find the number. What questions would you ask if you know it's a number on 8 bits? What would be your questions to find a number? Is it signed or unsigned? Let's say it's unsigned. It's not important for this problem, but let's say it's unsigned. So I have unsigned 8 bits. And you get to ask some questions to find a number. What would be your questions? Is it higher or lower than 128? What? Is it higher or lower? I want to get there, but 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 I want to get there strategically. You you he's already further than I am with this question. That's the answer, but let's take it in two steps. That's the second step. The natural way is to ask what are the bits, right? If you ask me, what is let's say more significant bit, zero. So you could say, what is the this is what power? Two to the seven bit. The answer is zero. Then you would ask, what is the two to the six bit? The answer is one, right? This is two to the seven, two to the six, two to the zero, right? Then what question would you ask? What is the two to the fifth bit? The answer is one. If you ask all the questions all the way to what is the 2 to the 0 bit, and you get the answer 1, you have the number, right? The number is right here. Make sense? So how many questions did I ask? Eight, Eight questions to find the number. Suppose <coughs> I don't get to ask bit questions. Now I'm getting to the answer he already gave. I get to ask, I cannot ask that kind of question, what is the fifth bit? Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm an idiot. I don't know binary. I, I only know 107. I don't know binary. But can you ask a different question that would indicate the bit? If me, the person who has the secret number, I don't understand binary, I'm not aware of bits, but I know 107. What question can you ask in decimal? that will answer the same exact way. Instead of asking what is the 2 to the 7 bit, what is the question you can ask in decimal? Let him repeat his answer. You can ask what? Is it at least what? 128. Because if it's at least 128, this bit here would be 1. All the numbers 128 or higher will be one something. So this question here is equivalent to asking, is the number at least 128? How about this question here is equivalent to what? At least? That depends on the first question. If the answer to this one is no, what should I ask here? 64. 64. But if the answer to this one would be Yes, what should I ask here? 192. The sum, 128 plus 64, because the sum gives me 1, 1. So I could ask these questions effectively in base 10. Is it bigger or smaller, bigger or smaller? Get those bits. This procedure has a name. Asking this bigger or smaller. Anybody knows the name? Binary search. Fundamental for computer science. I have a question. We'll see you at recitation. Let me stop the camera and I'll... Uh, can you press the red button? What's the difference between recitation? Yeah, right